Okay, so strategy. When we talk about strategy, we are basically assuming that we are comfortable with charting, with patterns, with indicators, and uh, we've figured out how to read the market in terms of rumors that you basically get from the news, uh, upgrades that you get from analysts, and the economic data that you get from a lot of different sources. So uh, you want to combine your technical with those, um, let's call them fundamentals, uh, because everything, the more uh, each one of these um, points, let's say, point you in the direction that you think your stock is going to move, then the more successful or the more likely you are to be successful. If you have a chart that says that support is going to hold and uh, you can see that there's a pattern that says that there is a reversal and you see that in your indicators you've got uh, bullish momentum, uh, you have uh, support from the SMAs and whatnot and you uh, heard a rumor about this particular company or the particular industry that this company is in and or your company was upgraded and economic data came out positive then if all of those line up then you are able to basically um, state with more confidence that what you see in your chart for your ticker is going going to be bullish because sometimes a market can drag or a whole industry can drag or even another you know a competitor to your company can drag your own ticker down even though your ticker has um, awesome support uh, has a great reversal pattern or a continuation of a bullish pattern and has great indicators all pointing you in the right direction but if there's a rumor or upgrades slash downgrade or economic data that is not good uh, even if it doesn't affect your particular market uh, or your industry, it's going to have an effect in the overall market sentiment. So once we have these things mastered, we move on to strategy. Basically in strategy, what we're going to look at is money available or how much capital you have to invest. And the idea here is to grow it slowly. I'm sure you've heard this a lot of times, but uh, that is the best thing, even if you have a million dollars that you just got for your birthday you know because you're rich or whatever uh, and uh, you want to invest you're not going to invest all million dollars you're not going to invest a hundred thousand dollars or even ten thousand dollars you want to start slowly because you want to prove to yourself that you've mastered the technical and the fundamentals on how to read markets before you actually invest what you have uh, and then you want to decide well, do I want to trade stocks or options? And this is very important because a lot of people actually prefer and start off with options and then they lose a lot of money and then they're turned off by the fact that they lost a lot of money and they think that there is no real money to be made in, uh, in options or in trading in general. And then they're like, okay, yeah, there's no easy money. Okay, yeah. And we're not saying it's easy money, but you also don't want to start out with the most complicated tool. Uh, stocks are obviously way more forgiving because there is no time factor involved. You could be right on the direction and uh, make money, but with options, even if you got the direction right, if you didn't get the timing right, or if you didn't get a particular market news which affects volatility, which also affects options contracts, then you might still lose money. So. If you want to start out, it re and this is I really uh, firmly believe in this. It really depends on your own personality. You have to really get to know yourself. You have to really understand how you work, how you tick, um, in order to decide which one of these is best for you, stocks or options. And even then, even in options, there's a lot of strategies that are more suited for different personalities. Um, and then, uh, and like I said here in point number three, there's options and then there's option strategies. Options is basically uh, buying and selling individual or single or naked options. Uh, that's the same thing said three different ways. Or there are also option strategies which can 
can help you, um, you know, uh, invest in options in a little bit more of a conservative way. And, uh, and you have to know them before you can choose if you are going for options. So that's basically uh, three different levels. There's stocks, which is the most conservative. Uh, there's options and then there's option strategies. Um, <clears throat> in point number four in strategy, we're going to talk about uh, whether when investing in options, this is specifically for options, are you in it to make a quick buck or are you in it to you know, make more money? In which case you probably want to swing uh, or basically you know, leave your trade on for longer. This uh, is actually a very important uh, tactic. Uh, you can make money by making a quick buck and pulling out and just keep doing that. You know, um, when you put on a trade, you have a plan, but a lot of people follow alerts that are not based on their plan. So they don't really have any idea what the plan is. <clears throat> And if they leave on the trade long enough, it can go from green to red in no time. Uh, and, and then it can go back to green the next day. So if you're not going to, if you, if you're playing alert and you don't know what the plan is and you didn't go over to the chart yourself and take a look at it, then you at least should define in your mind, are you in that trade to make a quick buck or are you going to swing or let's call it wing it or listen to the actual alert that exits the trade. This will trip up a lot of new traders uh, that I see, and it happened to me quite a bit. Uh, if, if I'm in it to make a quick buck, then that is what I'm going to do. I'm not gonna follow anybody's plan. The minute I see green, if it's a number of green that I like, you know, if it's 50 bucks, 100 bucks, that's fine for me, I'm pulling out. I don't care what the target was, I don't care where it's going, I don't care if it's going there at the end of the day, next day, or next week, or whatever. Um, but if I am going to follow the plan or if I, if I made up my own plan, then I probably want to swing and actually wait for it to reach the target. And this is where point number five comes in, which is use percentages. Uh, I just said, you know, if I see 10, 50, hundred bucks, I like it and I'm out. That will trip up a lot of people as well. The point that you want to have clear in your head is that you want to make a percent return on your investment. And you want to compare that to something that you can get elsewhere, whether that's one to 2% on a bank account or a CD or some other thing, or whether it's, you know, 10%, 12% just by investing it all in uh, the S&P 500 and letting it ride for, you know, I don't know, five, eight, 10 years. Um, or if you're thinking about dividends, like five, 6%, or even if you're thinking about corporate bonds, you know, where you also get six, eight, maybe 10%. That is what you want to compare it to. And the minute you hit the percentage that you think is the percentage that you are content with, then you get out. It doesn't matter if it's 10 or if it's a thousand bucks. So if you invested, let's say that you bought an options contract for $10 and it went to 20, that's a hundred percent gain. That is a very big deal. You may not be happy with the fact that you only made $10, but don't leave the trade on for longer until it hits 100 where in which case you would have made $90 just because you wanted to make $90. Instead, buy four or five contracts of those $10 contracts and let them go, you know, or make you 90 bucks. But you shouldn't deal in absolute dollar values. You should deal in percentages. When you make 15%, 20%, 30%, get out. That is a lot of money. Whether you only made 10 or whether you made 100, the problem was that you didn't invest enough, but it doesn't matter. If you made 15, 20, 30%, that's enough money so that when you keep growing it, even though that was a small trade, you're going to grow it slowly. So eventually, instead of buying one contract, you'll buy two and then you'll get comfortable enough and then you'll buy three and you keep going and then you buy four. And then eventually you'll even be able to do things like scale out. You put on a trade for four contracts, 
at 15%, you take out one of them. 30%, you take out another. You know, maybe 50%, you take out a third one and you let the fourth one ride. Okay, but make, make sure that you don't confuse yourself by thinking in absolute dollar terms instead of percentage terms because percentage return is what matters. And the final point in strategy is do not mix your long-term portfolio with your short-term portfolio. There are stocks that are going to go up and down and they are pretty solid. And we're talking blue chips, we're talking spy. Uh, you do not want to sell just because you you have your trading hat on and the market is down. Uh, you'll end up losing uh, money uh, because you're trying to uh, take a stock that you already own and get out of it just because the market is tanking that doesn't necessarily mean that you should pull out as you would with an options contract for example an options contract you buy it on a Monday and it has expiry for Friday if by Wednesday it hasn't you know made you 10 15 percent uh, you know unless you see some very important catalyst down the road you better get out because that thing is not coming back. But SPY goes down 20% because inflation is up and recession is looming and corporate earnings are messed up because we just came out of a pandemic and there was a lot of you know stimulus floating around in the market and people were buying stocks like crazy and that's why they went up. But now that they don't have all that money, then stocks are crashing. That doesn't mean you're going to pull out of your, you know, your S&P 500 or your blue chips or your, you know, your Apple stocks you have to leave those in because they will recover. Uh, so don't mix your, you know, your short term, oh, let's get in and out of this option contract with your long term investment because you'll end up messing your long term investments and selling them probably for a loss. Okay, and then the final thing we'll talk about is random tips. Um, uh, one good way to start, we mentioned uh, grow it slowly and use percentages is uh, get small contracts. If you choose a small contract, it is a lot easier uh, or a lot more likely that you'll be able to buy four or five or even ten, and then you'll be able to scale out as we talked about. Uh, the other thing is stay cool. Uh, some people uh, have a hard time relaxing uh, and anxiety gets the better of them. Uh, when that happens to me, I'll just, you know, I'll run into the kitchen, grab some to drink. It'll cool my nerves down, you know, and then it'll basically. Uh, uh, allow me to make better decisions and not get uh, scared because of uh, you know something that just came up on the news or some you know particular ticker that is tanking. Uh, so uh, try to find a way to stay cool. If you don't drink, then I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, find something else. Um, and then finally, don't trade on mobile at first. This is uh, not a good, a lot of the trading platforms that I mentioned in that uh, other video, they have the mobile versions, but trading on a small screen, not just because it's a small screen, a small screen will make it harder to get in and out and probably increase the chances of you making a mistake, but also the fact that it's a mobile, it's on your hand, it's easy to access when you're doing other things that are much more important, like driving a car, um, walking down the street, it's it's not what you want to do. I know it looks cool on those commercials where they say, oh, you know, join this brokerage firm or this brokerage firm. We have an app and you can trade while you're ordering your coffee at Starbucks on the way to the you know, to, to the office. That's that 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 may be true, but it does not mean that it's an ideal condition for trading. When you want to be trading, you want to be sitting down at a desk at your desk you know, in front of at least one monitor, well, obviously at least one monitor, probably uh, two monitors or a second screen where you can have some other source of information from markets coming through to you, uh, and you want to be relaxed. You don't want to be on some other strenuous environment, definitely don't want to be driving. And um, so try to stay away from the mobile trade, uh, at least at first. Okay, so now we're going to dive into these individual videos and um, cover these topics in depth. I hope you enjoy this.